Okay, so you pass through the gates into uh, the first district on the eastern side. Is it morning right now? Um, it would be probably around dinner time by the time you get to the the city. What's your plan for your cart, Renick? Uh, probably go to a merchant square with it. Okay, well, you can go to the Eastern Market and uh, set up there. And just kind of see what uh, what the other merchants are doing with their stalls. Um, was that more than a uh, hundred miles that we traveled? I don't think so. Okay. I think it's only like 50 or 60 miles, maybe 70 miles to the capital. Okay. I was just wondering, I have travels more than a hundred miles in a week on my affiliation day. Weird one. But... Yeah, it's 62 miles. Yep. If we leave within the week, then you would get it. Yep. Okay, so uh, as you guys are progressing through uh, the city, uh, was there anything specific you wanted to know, Drenik, about your uh, setup? Uh, just what kind of uh, precautions the other merchants are taking when they're wrapping up their stalls so, so my stuff doesn't get stolen. Um, the Eastern Market is pretty secure. Um, obviously, everyone is locking up their goods and making sure that they're not easily uh, liftable. But uh, no one's going to exceptional uh, means to protect things. The, uh, the Merchants Guild has a uh, market watch, just uh, security guards who are on hand if anything happens. They don't interfere in uh, activities, but they are there to report them immediately and basically testify against anyone they see. All right, yeah, I would uh, lock up the cart then and uh, probably go talk to one of the guards to see who I need to talk to to be able to sell goods here. Okay, if you are just interested in a day pass, you just need to be in one of the um, open slots. There aren't a lot of day tra traders in the capital, so there's almost always an open slot. Um, but you can only uh, claim a day slot uh, in the morning, so you have to move your card at night. If you want to uh, to book a lot, you have to go to the Merchants Guild and uh, apply for a license. It'll cost you a couple uh, coins and uh, probably about an hour of dealing with their... Uh, bureaucracy. So before we enter the city, um, one of the main things Samuel's going to make sure he does as he enters is he's not going to wear anything close to noble garbs. He'll borrow clothes from uh, Dranik that for the, so that he looks more like a commoner. You hear that, Dranik? You're a commoner. Yep, I am a commoner. Um, do you want me to actually disguise you? That'd probably be useful, yeah. Or do you have a disguise kit? I'm going to give you a penis nose. Only if you can make it square. Why would you want a square penis? Why not? I was like, I don't know if I've ever heard of a square penis. It's a square nose.
All right. Um, I'll have to redo it in the morning, but it should be fine. So yeah, I mean, uh, I'll just verify that I'm good to park my cart where it is and lock it up. And then I'll probably go deal with the merchant guild tomorrow. Yep, that's fine. You can uh, park your overnight as long as you uh, have your license in the morning when they come around to check. And I'll just uh, give a gold coin to each of the guards that's immediately around that area like that I see and just say, just keep an eye on it. I know you're getting paid, but a little extra coin won't hurt. Yeah, especially a week's pay for one night. How many guards is in the immediate area? Uh, there are four guards um, stationed at each of the entrances to the uh, market area. It is uh, well lit, so while there isn't perfect line of sight, um, and you could obviously come in between the buildings between the building. and whatnot, um, the main roads are the fastest egress, so they that's where they're stationed. Yeah, I, I guess when I said immediate area, I meant like to the guard I was talking to, because I don't want like give a coin to one guard and then have three other guards pissed off that they didn't get a coin and then go fuck my shit up. That, that's totally fair. So are you paying off all four of them or just the one? All four of them. Okay. Paying off seems dirty. This is more making sure I get special watch. Make sure they're extra on guard. Get that coffee that they need. I, I like how, like, I've played with Kenny for years and he's, like, counts every silver and so does thy lordship. And then this group just is like, here's gold, here's money, here's money. Kenny counts every gold piece, but he generally doesn't go lower than gold. So I would say that the danger of paying off every single guard, all four of them, with a gold piece, is that they're all going to look at this and be like, this guy has a lot of money. We should go steal all his crap. Yeah, they're going to be really disappointed when they find out that I probably paid them more than my entire what's in my card right now. Well, what kind of uh, merchandise do you deal in? So I would have taken uh, just merchandise that uh, is specific to our local area and brought it to the capital. So I'm not really sure what it is since I'm not an actual crafter. I just buy what is specific to the area that okay. needs to get moved up north. You know, this is something we should probably talk about. I, you have two crafters in the group, me and my cohort. Yeah, but have you spent any time crafting? No, but if he we wanted, but we didn't ever plan it. Like we should probably talk about that some some point. Yeah, that's fine. Um, the main exports from the uh, the area around Dens are agricultural products. Um, and that's and, why I was saying four gold probably covers most of it. Yeah, for the most part. Um, depending upon how, if you're bringing stuff to the capital, you probably want to bring higher end merchandise just because it's a long way to travel for four silver pieces worth of profit. But there are all kinds of uh, artisan type things you can do. Like instead of bringing wheat, you could bring fresh bread and stuff like that. Um, I was just curious if you had any idea what you were dealing in or uh, if you were just sort of hand waving it. Nope, this is still new. So right now he's still in the traveling merchant mindset. Where he's picking up from one place and taking it to another place to sell it. I just posted what my crafting skills are. If you need me, if you ever want me to do any crafting for you. Because right now he's just trying to make a name for himself. 
No, that's fair. Okay, so as you guys proceed through uh, the city, um, it's kind of overwhelming. Uh, I guess Dranik's probably the only one who's uh, been here. Um, but as you are walking down the street, uh, amazed at all the uh, sights, Samuel, you you get this eerie feeling that a lot of this is familiar to you. Like you're not really sure what anything is, but it just seems like you remember it. That is a weird feeling since you has never visited the capital. Uh, you didn't till your, your aunt died. Oh, did we? I didn't, yeah, your family I used to I come. That part. Yeah, your family yeah. used to come here all the time until your um, aunt uh, passed away. And yeah, that's you right. I just remember suddenly that. stopped coming to the capital, but you were only four when that happened. Okay, so it it's, it hasn't changed enough that he would it would be completely unrecognizable. Well, it hasn't really changed much, but the big thing is it's an old memory from your early childhood, so it's very vague. Like, you see a sign, and you're like, I remember that sign, and but I don't remember anything else around here. I remember having a similar sensation uh, when I was a teenager, going to different parts of Toronto, and it's like, my mom would drive on the highway, so we would just get to an area, and then I wouldn't have any idea how far we were from home, but we're at this mall. I like this mall. This mall is really cool. It's got a lot of stuff. And then, like, 15 years later, I moved into an area in Scarborough where that mall was. And I was like, this mall? I remember this mall. I have no idea why I remember this mall, but I definitely remember this mall. Right. At any rate, um, as you guys are progressing... Um, Magnus, you want to give me a perception check? <laughs> nice. Okay, never mind then. You continue on, uh, into the city. Um, okay, did I put the map on here? I... Oh, yeah, I did. So you guys are basically walking along uh, the northern road here on the east side. Um, not far from the... Uh, the river to the south, um, basically heading towards the uh, the center of the city. You don't really have much of a destination at this point because you're not familiar with the area. You're just kind of wandering. I suggest we look for a noisy, boisterous tavern. Something that's busy. Because they either have good food, good drink, or good beds. And either way, we'll be able to blend in easier. But there's no blending in for me. That is true. You are a bit of a sore thumb. Are there any other non-humans that I see in this town or city as we walk down? There are non-humans. There aren't uh, large, um, what do they call it? Populous? Well, there's a specific term for it, but um, like a ghetto, there there isn't large collections of it. It's mostly human. Um, there used to be a, a fairly large elven population here, like 10% of the population was elven at one point. But during the purge, uh, most of the elves were run out of the city. As you're walking down the uh, the drag, uh, Samuel, you see a uh, an old uh, faded sign 
hanging out in front of this uh, weird kind of storefront. Um, and it is, uh, looks like it's a, some kind of uh, athletics club. Uh, it says the uh, Silver Sword uh, Fencing Club. Silver Sword? Silver, Silver Sword Fencing Club. Magnus is very interested in that place. Samuel would be as well. Uh, why don't we check it out? Why don't we go inside? Is this somewhere he recognizes from his childhood as well? Um, the sign seems incredibly familiar, but nothing else does. Like, you see the sign, and it's like reminds you of like a keychain or something you had when you were a kid. But you look around, and nothing else really catches your eye. Okay, so you guys go inside. May as well. Okay, um, inside uh, is just like a little showroom. I can stick you guys in this uh, building just for pretense. What building are we in? My lagging a bit there. You guys are in the Silver Sword Fencing uh, Club. So the front area here is a bunch of uh, display cases, a uh, variety of uh, weapons and light armor, um, all kinds of training gear. There is a, a big cushion in the corner. Um, and there's a big old dog laying on it. Looks like some kind of mutt, like a St. Bernard Great uh, Pyrenees cross. I, I go pet the dog. The dog licks you. Probably, the dog's probably bigger than me too. Oh yeah, it's way bigger than you. I go up and uh, also pet the dog and say, do you want to eat this little guy? Is that your natural food? Let me help you. I magic missile slevin or a magic missile drain. Okay, well you guys are perusing around. Um a tall, uh dark haired uh lady comes out. She looks like she's a little bit younger than you, uh Samuel. You're right. And, uh, yeah, what did you do with uh, the Baron's daughter? Has anything officially happened with that? Uh, nothing officially has happened, but we're still hanging out. She doesn't, uh, she seem, doesn't seem super interested if I'm not doing something heroic. Yeah, that's women for you. So Just I was trying to, with the whole plan was with the goblin nest was to go in there and try to get the, at least her chest back, but then I, I think we kind of forgot about that at the end there. Yeah, I said that at the beginning. Make sure when you're done, you go and get the chest back, and you guys. Yeah. Can. Well, I guess the when we got there and there wasn't some like actual base of operations, it was it kind of threw me off and made me think maybe the chest isn't even still here. I think you took the chest home with you. It was just the silver that was there. Because the hobgoblins. Oh, you're right. We did. It took was. all the gold out of the chest, and it's a magical chest that belongs to the Baron. So if they're not interested in it, they had no interest in it because it's a magical chest they can't open. Yep, oh. that's what it was. You're right. We we already had the chest. We were just were trying to get back the silver. We never really did do that, but I think I took the silver out of my own pocket to give back to him. Fair enough. Okay. Um, she comes out from the uh, the back room. Um, in this building, uh, that little nook to the north is like the, uh, behind the counter area. And then beyond that, there's a, like a warehouse, uh, type of structure. I meant to make a map for this. I just didn't have time. 
I was too busy actually working on the adventure and I was like, ah, this might be a 10 minute interaction. This might be a two hour interaction, but if I don't have material for us to do for the rest of the session, we're not going to have a session. Um, and she, uh, she kind of eyes you, uh, Samuel and then, uh, walks over to, uh, Magnus and says, uh, what can I get you, sir? Do they serve tea? I can definitely uh, get you some tea if you would like. They don't serve tea. This isn't a beverage house. What is it exactly? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. It is a uh, fencing club. So it's a private club for uh, local uh, fencers. I'll be curious just watching them for now. Okay. Um, so uh, after she talks to uh, Magnus, uh, she comes over to you, Samuel, and uh, gives you the once over again and uh, kind of says, doesn't really seem like uh, the type of place that uh, would interest you. And she kind of nods to your giant sword. Oh, he's on the phone. Shit, I didn't see that. You guys can hear there's a fair amount of uh, commotion in the, the back. It sounds like there's um, some kind of training going on. Doesn't Tyrannic use a spray field? Uh, at one point, Dranic used to read. Sorry about that. I'm back. What, uh, what was the question posed? Um, after she talks to Magnus and doesn't really get any uh, real information from him, she comes over and eyes you again and then uh, says, uh, doesn't really seem like uh, the type of place you would be interested in. And she kind of nods to your giant sword. Oh, I... I... All fighting styles are interesting, so why not? Uh, why not at least observe a few people here? Are you interested in joining the club? I don't know that I would be any good, but I could always. But it could always be good for some practice. Okay, uh, she walks back to the uh, the counter. And she uh, grabs a couple of applications for you. Um, says that it's uh, five gold pieces for uh, a, uh, registration. And then there is a ten gold piece a month uh, membership fee. I walk up to her. Ten to gold account. a month membership fee? Yes, it's a very exclusive club. Holy crap. I don't know if I'm paying ten dollars a month to to train here, but I will uh, take the application for now, just in case. I Magnus to... will gladly pay. Uh, I want to... Uh, to apply. You have a kids class? As I try to poke over the counter. Ah, uh, yeah, we do all kinds of classes. I I don't think my height will match the adults. I turn to uh, Rango. It's not about your size. It's the size of the heart of the fight. I kind of I kind of just elbow you in the shit. Uh, she points over to one of the display cases where they have uh, small-sized uh, rapiers. Um, they're mostly used by uh, Kender, who sometimes frequent the establishment, but I guess they would also be good for children. We don't usually allow children to use edge blades, but uh, we also have some... Uh, uh, training weapons, if you uh, want to use those. I kind of just look at the rapiers and think, I have no idea how to use one of these. They say out loud. And kind of pull up my staff and look at it. They're very different weapons.
and sign up for the adult class. Okay, so you fill out the form? Fill out the form with Magnus, yep. You're filling out a form too, Magnus? Yes, I am. Okay, um, so she uh, goes over the paperwork with you and uh, collects your five gold pieces and asks if uh, there's anything else uh, you need. Uh, I'd ask her if I can just buy a small rapier from them just so I can start practicing outside of outside with Magnus when we're on our free time. For sure. Even though I don't think any of my classes can use a rapier, whatever. I will yeah, work. rapier is a uh, martial weapon. Yep. But I'm assuming I can do that as a train skill. You can use it, just not great. Yeah, you're minus four when you use a non-proficient weapon. I don't have my train skill yet, so that's something I could do a train skill in. Yeah, you could uh, train for martial weapons if you want. I will buy a small rapier from her and uh sheath or if it comes with a sheath or whatever. And thank you. Say thank you. Uh, a small rapier will cost you ten gold pieces and it'll cost three gold pieces for a scabbard for it. Okay. You said this is an exclusive club? Uh, yes, highly exclusive. You know what? I'll sign up too. Okay. She uh, grabbed a application for each of you, so she just hands you yours. Uh, rangers get martial weapons. Yep, rangers get martial weapons. Just thinking, so you just think if my court would sign up with me, probably. Samuel, you can roll a perception check. I'm starting to think I need to put more points into perception. Well, it's the most important. Yeah, I can't imagine why you wouldn't have it maxed. I don't think it's a class skill. I think I have to go cross class with it. Yeah, but you'd still put the maximum half ranks in it. Yeah. All right, I rolled a 16 on that. And then my co Can I have the cohort roll as well, or is this something specific to Samuel? Uh, your cohort can roll as well. I did give him a few more points, so... Okay, uh, as you guys are looking around, you notice they have one uh, large uh, display case. It's almost eight feet tall, and in the back of it, there's a uh, big, shiny uh, greatsword. Samuel's going to point over at the the great sword at, uh, and ask the woman. She'd be like, "So if if you if you didn't expect to see someone like me in here, why do you guys say something like that?" Um, that was an old commission uh, that got returned and never got resold. We don't normally carry uh, that type of stock. It's been in the cabinet for uh, probably fifteen years now. Could you tell me a little bit more about its history? Like, why was it possibly returned? Who commissioned it? And what exactly uh, is special about it? Um, an old uh, an old soldier uh, commissioned its uh, craft crafting, um, and then shortly after uh, picking it up, he uh, returned it and asked for his money back. We were unable to. 
uh, refund it fully, but uh, we did give him a partial credit for it. And he accepted that and uh, left it here. Ringo asked a question in chat. I didn't want to know. While they were talking, can I slide a hand cast to tech magic on it? Uh, yeah, you can roll your slide of hand. Okay. Uh, hang on, let me roll my check. You are successful. Okay, does it give off any magical aura? It does not radiate any magical aura. Okay. Do you mind if I inspect it myself? Uh, by all means. Um, she uh, grabs the keys from under the counter and uh, opens up the cabinet for you. Samuel would pull it out uh, and hold it himself. What kind of sword is it? A great sword, you said? It is a great sword. Okay. Is uh quality check on it. I do have some points in the craft weapon. Uh also have some uh Drake Granick has a craft appraisal. I do not have any craft weapon. Or not craft appraisal, just appraisal. Appraisal should be able to help out there too. Do you want me to take a look at it? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, another nat one. Two in a row. You go, girl. How much did, would that well, It looks like it? a sword to me. Yeah, it's definitely a sword. How much are you selling it for? Uh, that is a rather exceptional uh, piece. Um, she uh, kind of looks it up and down. She's like, "Yeah, this is uh, this is listed at twelve hundred gold pieces." And you guys have had it for a while. Yes. Hmm, since you guys have been struggling to get this out of your shop, would you take uh, 800 for it? Uh, I'm afraid I couldn't uh, make that call. Whose call is that to make? Um, I'd have to talk to the manager about that. Is she around today? Uh, yeah, I can get her. Um, she runs in the back and uh, brings out um, Shandar and says, uh, Shandar can uh, assist you in your uh, negotiations. Uh, good morning, right? Good morning. Uh, it's afternoon. Have... It's late afternoon, actually. Oh, oh, that's right. We just got here. It's not. We didn't sleep yet. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening. I was uh, your, your um employee there was telling me a little bit about the sword. And it sounds like you guys are struggling to offload it. She's saying the price is twelve hundred. I was wondering if you'd be willing to take eight hundred for it. Unfortunately, uh, I cannot go that low. Why why would you want such an expensive sword? I'll chime in that I will put in two hundred gold, you guys will do it for a thousand. I'm afraid the uh the owner uh, is pretty rigid on the price. I thought you guys were the owner. The owner of the sword. 
Ah, so the individual that bought the sword showed up, handled it once, and then told you to sell it for him? Uh, no, the original um, commissioner uh, arranged for the sword and then returned it. And uh, the owner of the uh, the shop is the owner, and it's been in the shop for a long time, and uh, he's quite attached to it. That's interesting. Well, uh, I hand it back to them. I will be back for this if I uh, make the decision to that I'm willing to spend the extra money on it. But at this time, I think I'm going to have to take some time to consider it. I didn't catch your name. No, you didn't. No, I leave it at that. <laughs> you missed the perfect opportunity to say I didn't throw it. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's that's good. That's better than what I said, but I already that's where I'm gonna leave it. Um I'm not sure how common of a name he has on whether or not it's great to be giving it out. You could just say Sam. It's not lying. I mean it's generic enough not to be Yeah identifying. Yeah, yeah. he'll tell her it's Sam. Can I do a knowledge local or whatever to see how common of a name that is? It'd be a fairly common name. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I don't want him to accidentally give away anything about his heritage. Well, your name probably wouldn't be common knowledge to anyone who doesn't know you. Even being the son of a lord? Yeah, that's basically my point, is you're the son of a lord, so your name isn't that significant to people in the capital here, and there are hundreds of lords. That's fair. I fucking hate that they put the spin icon on the token above the token, and as soon as you click on the token to spin it, the bubbles pop up and then you're fucked. so obnoxious so with with that I think we're ready to leave this store but he wants to ask um, I know you guys rolled poorly but he wants to ask what their thoughts are on the sword like why would they be selling uh, so the sword for so much probably just my guess and I will my guess, I'm not going to say that I cast Tech Magic on it, but my guess is that um, it's just the way the craftsmanship of it, because it looks like a very beautiful piece. Almost looks like it's meant for, uh, not for fighting, but for, like, as a decorative piece. So why would the a, a warrior have commissioned it and, and just left it there? That I don't know. You guys can roll a knowledge local. All on you guys. I don't have that. I guess I can do it at minus four, right? Minus five, yeah. Minus five. You basically have no chance of making it if you don't have any ranks in it. Uh, 13. Yeah, that won't even make a base check. Um, Drannik, uh, a weapon of that value, um, based on the fact that they're not willing to part with it, would suggest that there is something uniquely special about it. Like even an, an except, or not, not an exceptional, but a, even a master where greatsword is only worth like a 150, something like that, 300 gold pieces. And this is pretty much in the category or approaching the category of exceptional, even though it didn't appear to have any exceptional qualities
He just wants to make sure he's not getting scammed and nobody was able to roll high enough to get a good value on it. Yeah, you guys just didn't figure out what it was. Unfortunately. You guys that, just that's the, every, that's every the story of this campaign. Show. Yeah. Okay. Is there any chance I can... Yeah, Post. exceptional great sword would be fifteen hundred gold pieces. So that would be a sword made out of mithril or adamantine. Is there any way we could do a post luck up on one of the, any of those checks? Um, if any one of those checks is close enough, I don't think any of your checks were in the vicinity of good. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Maybe then when we come back to yeah. a second round of checks on it. Yeah, rolling that nat one really kind of hurt. Yeah, appraising the sword would have told you a lot about it. Okay, well, you guys are kind of mulling about. Um, you hear something approaching the window by the door. Um, it's propped open. And a small black dragon lands on the window windowsill. And, uh... Is this one actually a black dragon? Um, you can roll a Knowledge Arcana. What happened? I'm gonna roll a Knowledge Arcana and try to walk closer to it reaching my hand out a little bit like upside of my palm facing down you guys are the master of chill check flubbing of this campaign so far o only when it matters when it doesn't matter we do fine okay uh, the dragon says in a very sultry uh, female voice he's here And then immediately kind of lands on the windowsill, sticks its head in the room, and and then it uh, spins around and goes back out. Did my 28 not help with anything? Um, you once again know that it's not a black dragon, but you're not sure what it is. Would a 31 help? A 31 would help. I will block that up to 31. Um, you realize that it is actually an adamantine dragon. They are not native to this plane. Uh, can I roll a planes check on that? Yep. Uh, 22. You know that adamantine dragons are, uh, the defenders of, uh, uh, the seven heavens of Celestia, but beyond that, you don't know much about them. I'm not uh, liking that my... he's here message. What a, what a 20... Tell me more information about the Adamantine Dragon. Sorry, what was that? Would a 26 yeah, help me get more information about the Adamantine Dragon? Uh, no. Okay. He's got to be talking about the sword. Who's talking about the sword? The dragon. No, it, he's got to be talking about Samuel. Okay, um, you guys can roll another perception check. As you are focused on the dragon who scooches out the window. Uh, the dog quickly uh, stands up, uh, also turns into a dragon, a gold one, and flies out the window. No wonder he was so friendly to the kobold. <sighs> so I don't know if that had anything to do with us then. That was the dog being told that somebody was there. Sorry, I missed what you were saying why he was so friendly to me. My dog's going insane. Why was he being extra friendly to me? He changed into a gold dragon and it flew out the window. Oh! Gold is chaotic good, though, right? 
Gold, gold is, is lawful, lawful good. good. Why was he friendly to the brass heritage dragon or cobalt? Brass is not an evil dragon either. Oh, okay. Sorry, well, I forgot. I missed it completely. Did he say anything else to me, or did he just kind of look at? Me? He didn't look at you. He just left the window. The other, so the the adamantine dragon came and said he's here, and then the gold, the dog that had been following us around, uh, took off and left us. Uh, I'm gonna look at the dragon. I'm gonna look at the uh, the the manager or owner of the establishment. What was that about? And ask what was that uh, that about? Um, as you turn uh, back to uh, Shandar, um, an individual comes running out of the uh, the back area and uh, jumps over the counter and uh, runs out the door as well. All right, let's follow him. Uh, yep, that's what I was about to And cue the Benny Hill music. <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys go out onto the street. I don't think I think the door is locked. Oh yeah, I got the even the windows are blocked. <laughs> Joe, that this is the perfect theme for do, us <laughs> for us. So you guys can uh, head out onto the street. And we lost him already. And there is I'm not no sign. Seeing of my token. I'm not seeing my token on this map. Oh my god! It's just it's it's not there again. Oh my god! You're <laughs> so annoying. Uh, How can you see on the map then? I I I can still see everything that my token see. Oh, now I reloaded and now nobody's token is there. I'm gonna open this up in a different browser. Let me download Firefox. Um, this upon not seeing him, I walk back into the store and go ask the manager, "What was that about? And why is there a gold dragon here?" Uh, she says, "What are you talking about?" I point to the window and say there was a adamant or an adamantine dragon. Was it adamantine or did it shape shift into a gold? Uh, there was an adamantine okay. dragon in the window and the dog shape shifted into a gold dragon. I point to where the dog was sitting. I'm like, there, that dog just turned back into an adamantine dragon or into a gold dragon. What's going what on? What dog here? are you talking about? I, I, not paying any attention, apparently. Or we're all hallucinating. Up. Maybe we're the only ones that see them. There's a million reasons why she wouldn't notice a dog, and we would. Or she's playing dumb. Sense mode of her. Can I sense? Yeah, can I sense mode of her? Most definitely. I put in a hundred one seconds. And that's, I'll take, I'll keep that one. Um, she seems sincere in her confusion. Is the bigger guy the, the owner here still? Or in the remain room here? The To your knowledge, the owner isn't here at all. Okay. Um, You've only David... talked to uh, Raven and Shandar. Okay. Well, I will ask her. Did you see that guy jump the table or jump the counter? Yeah, that was Wolf. Where was he off to? In our... I don't know. I'm not his babysitter. I'm just looking really confused. I just walk out the door and. And just kind of ponder what just happened. Also, I forgot to ask, what is, um, is it only at a half or a 1.5 that I start, my eyes start glowing, or is it at one, or is that when I'm too above my max? When That's you're what? above your max, you start glowing. Okay, because you're above your max. 
Okay, because I totally forgot to waste my spellfire since the last uh, fight. Because it doesn't go down, does it? No, but you can just expend it. Okay. I'll save it for a time needed. I don't think there's any checks because I can go to 1.5, I think. Yeah, I can. Okay, as you are leaving the uh, shop, you can roll a perception check. Magnus, you notice um, an older uh, man uh, with an eye patch kind of peer out from the back room and look around. Seems like he's just checking out all the commotion. I point to Rango. I wonder what his deal is. I, I don't know. I never saw him, but maybe he's the master or like the master trainer here or something. Okay, so you guys are going to go find a place to stay for the night? Uh, so we don't see him at all, the guy that rent, that booked it? No, he seems to have just vanished. Yeah, I guess we'll go find somewhere to stay. I was hoping to figure out what was going on with the dragons. So, my f I think it's safe to say of I that that, adamantine, or that black dragon we saw earlier might have been an adamantine dragon. It's safe to put two point point together you're safe to assume anything you're willing to assume i will just yeah i'm gonna just tell the group that that, that dragon we saw at the when we were coming into town was an adamantine dragon there's a good but, chance that that's who they're talking about when he's they say he's here then well let's go find a place to get some food and Relax. 